I, I kind of want to jump into USA for a minute, JT. Yeah, go um, for it. Just kind of want to your thoughts are on our, our roster. I personally, I, I was I was I was pretty surprised um, without without Donovan. I could see it if there were certain players that deserved it and that were really producing on the club level or something like that. Yeah. But in my opinion, I think there's players that don't deserve to go to the World Cup over Donovan. I think. Well, you kind of mentioned close, but I think you can't teach experience in scoring big time goals. You can't teach that; it just happens. Uh, like, you, like I think the biggest goal in World Cup history for the United States is probably that goal by Donovan. Yeah. In the against the most, I don't know the biggest. I mean, they've done better, but I mean, I think the biggest in the sense of clutchest or maybe the most dramatic. Yeah. And I think. I mean, if you're the guys that got in here before him, I mean, I don't, Bedoya really doesn't do much for me. It really doesn't uh, get me very excited. Um, Vince Carood, he may score a goal, but he's not great to me. Um, and the real one, I don't know what you're thinking on this guy at JT, but I think he could be a star of the future, but I don't think he should be going this year, is Julian Green. My guess is what happened was it was kind of like a college recruitment situation. I think Clemson kind of uh, not only used I think maybe a German connection, but I think he basically told Green, hey, if you commit to USA, you can come to the World Cup this year because, I mean, there's no way Green would have made it to Germany this year. Right. Just because they're more a lot deeper than we are. And I think, I mean, I think Donovan's a lot better player to player right now than Julian Green. I think Julian Green could be a star in the future. I think he's still strong, but that kind of, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, Green could be good big long term, but Donovan also, I could see him scoring one or two big goals or big time crosses for us in big games here. Yeah, um, you know, I, I agree with you completely on that. Um, I, I think um, uh, Alexi Lala said it perfectly. For me, really, I have no problem with Landon Donovan not being on the squad. Um, I don't think he is one of the best players for the USA right now. Um, I, I he took that sabbatical last year where he wasn't even playing soccer. So that, to me, there's not really any way that he's fit. Now, granted, everyone's like, oh, he, he was left off the roster and then goes and, and scores four goals in the MLS. Um, but then again, it's not it's not like he's snapping off against Premier League squads or, or, or Bundesliga or La Liga or Serie A, you know. Um, I think, I you know, I have no problem with Donovan not being on the squad. But then, with that being said, you take a look at the squad, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. There is no way that Donovan is is not deserving of a World Cup spot compared to some of these other players. Now, um, a couple of the guys you mentioned, uh, Bedoya and Discarude, um I personally think Bedoya is playing very well right now. I'm actually glad he's in the squad. I think that he uh, he 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 puts on an American shirt. He really actually is really fundamental. Uh, gets the job done, um, and I really like him being on a wing where Zussi's on the other. I think those two really play well. Um, Discarude, I kind of like just in the sense of, of a guy coming off the bench brings a lot of energy. Um, I think that he's he's a pretty good player as well. Um, the thing with Donovan, I think, not to really, you know, I'm not trying to call anyone out necessarily, but I think Brad Davis over Donovan's kind of an interesting decision because they both play in the MLS, but really Donovan's been doing more, for, at least this season, for, as far as I can, you know, see, I'm not necessarily, you know, dissecting the Galaxy and the Dynamos game by game, but I think Donovan probably should have been a selection over, over Brad Davis, in my opinion, um, and then to get to a couple other guys, a couple youngsters, um, I'm, I mean, Yedlin to me is kind of an interesting decision. I know this is going kind of out of Donovan's range uh, as he's, you know, midfield and these are defenders, but Yedlin's kind of an interesting decision, a young decision. John Brooks, I'm really surprised he's on there um, because he, he made a mess of a game against Ukraine. Um, really, I, to me, you know, I'm not. You can't blame one single person for lo a loss, but there's just a lot of mo like those goals was really kind of him not being in the right position, not knowing where to be in the right position. And then Tim Howard makes a great save, but because no one got back, you know, there's 
three Ukrainians surrounding Tim Howard, so it doesn't matter if you make the first, second save, they're going to put one in eventually. So John Brooks is a very surpri surprising pick to me. Julian Green, the same thing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of hype coming for this kid for playing with Bayern. Um, I was, I, you know, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of on the bandwagon initially, thinking, hey, this is a, a good young spark that we can put in. But he's got, what, two or three caps now, and he hasn't really done, I mean, you can't say he hasn't done anything, but he's not as exciting as I thought he was going to be. You know, maybe the hype is almost a little bit too more. But yeah, I don't. Green, Brooks, Yedlin, some of these guys have no deserve. You know, they don't really deserve a World Cup spot over Landon Donovan, in my opinion. I, regardless of where the positions is. Uh, but there's, you know, there's some other players. That, you know, other than, like Donovan didn't make it. Um, Terrence Boyd, I think, is playing very great right now. But he didn't make it. Obviously, that's kind. Of, it was a toss-up between him and Wando, and I think Wando is fantastic as well right now. So that's a tough call. But I almost feel like I'd rather have Boyd coming as another option off the bench, other than some of these other guys. Uh, you know, it's it's very tough. I've said I kind of agree with you that there. You know, not to say there's something fishy, but there was some reason for Julian Green to be maybe on this World Cup roster now. Um, it is a very interesting situation due to the fact that uh, these guys have really not really done anything for USA Soccer, but yet they get, they're getting a spot on the world, on the big stage for the country. I got one point to make. I got a kind of question to pose about the team that I think it needs to be asked. I think one more point I want to make. I think with Brad Davis that that I like is that he's a left footed player, and That's fair. I mean I kind of. When I was in Houston, I, I, this is one game, a small family size, but I've watched it a decent amount. Um, when I watched him in Houston, and I saw his suits in Houston, they were just playmakers single-handedly creating for guys who probably, uh, I probably could have been out there and made a couple plays, but <laughs> they, really made, they really made everyone else on their team better. They, they, they made a lot, of, a lot of good crosses. I feel like they're very ambitious, and they make plays, and they're not scared to, to, to fit in that sense. But the question that I have to pose, Justin, is um, at what point does Josie out there lose? Right now, it seems like Josie out there is just given that starting a nine or a ten yeah. striker spot. At what point are we like Josie? You're not, you're not really doing it anymore. We got, I mean, Aaron Johansson yeah. is scoring big, he's scoring a ton of goals. He's going to on fire. He, he, screwed, he came in in that uh, Roger by John game. And, yep. Made a clinical header, uh, and then so I mean what? And then or what? At what point do you put, would you possibly uh, play five midfielders and maybe just have Dempsey up there? I mean it doesn't seem like that's the case. But uh, what? At what point do you, do you tell Altidore, "Hey man, you're not getting it done. We need we're 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 going to come off the bench." Yeah, uh, I'm actually glad you you brought that up because in my little mini rant there, I totally forgot about that. Um, yeah, Joe. It's as well. As, it's that age old, there that uh, age old adage. You know, what have you done for me lately? I mean, Josie had a fantastic 2013 campaign, but he has not done anything in a USA shirt. I mean, needless to say, anything on an international stage. Uh, obviously, there's a huge fallout there at Sunderland. Uh, I. It really is one of the situations he has not really contributed, but you, you're kind of right. He keeps getting that starting spot. Uh, I, I, I love Aaron Johansson. I think he is a fantastic player. He has proven to me, um, you know, he he deserves a spot in 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 Brazil. To me, though, I I kind of you know not to say that I don't th I think he's he's good enough to start over Josie, but I really like him coming off the bench because he adds that kind of X factor on the scoring charts where you bring him in off the bench and he seems to find a way to get that goal. So I like keeping him um, kind of a, as, as a, a like kind of as a wild card situation where if you're in that tough spot you could put him in and he'll find you a goal. I think Wando should start over um, Josie Altidore because in that Azerbaijan game um, Dempsey uh, he, he strained his groin or something like that I believe in the in the pregame so they swapped him out, put Wando Wondolowski in there uh, in the starting spot. He had like five minutes to warm up, yet when the game started, Wando was the one having all the touches on the ball. He, the first three or four good chances USA had to score 
was Wondolowski figuring it out himself, really. Um, so I would almost say, right, if you're going to, you need to base stuff what's going on, I think Wanda should probably be in the starting lineup up there with Dempsey, and Altidore should should maybe not. He should maybe be on the bench to start. I, I, could, I could see that. I, I kind of, I, I kind of, kind of slip my mind. Uh, Wanda's been kind of like our, our nearest lab close, though. You feel like, mm-hmm. I don't know, he doesn't really jump off the field. Like, he doesn't, he won't do too, he won't pull any amazing goals, but he, he's clinical. Mm-hmm. He, he knows how to score. It definitely, it definitely shows. The only thing I like about Altidore that I don't think many players, uh, no, no other player on our team or maybe very, uh, not few players in the world, He's, he's very good at when we, we, we when it seems like there's pressure on our defense, whether it's Howard or one of our defenders clearing it, and he's against one or two defenders, mm-hmm. kind of just winning that 50 50 ball, and then kind of playing it off to Duke, you're playing it off to, 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 uh, to Davis or Denver or whoever. Right. I think he has that skill better than anyone on our team, and probably. One of his under, one of the better players in the world at doing that. I mean, that's kind of a lofty statement. But from what I've seen, he does a really good job at that. And I think that alone does a good. That's, that's what it might be a good reason to have him on, especially because when we're going against three teams, we're going against who are great offensively, uh, and maybe not as much defensive, maybe more offensively minded. When you have, you want to be able to turn the offense and defense quick, so hopefully, I think that he's definitely an athlete. Yeah. Um, you, you did bring up a good point there. Um, he's, he is very good at winning some of those 50 50 balls when we're trying to clear it out. Um, and, and he's good at figuring out where to put the ball. Um, I also, I do, I, he's probably the, the most physical striker we have. Um, and he, and he does use that to his advantage to try and get into a good spot to lay it off or something like that. So I do like that about him. Um, it, it is it, the problem is though is it just seems like a so a lot of these games lately he just has kind of been out of his element. Now I understand that you know things can get kind of hairy in, in, in the in the European setup and club when you're not getting those consistent starts and, and you know you're not playing very much and it can maybe kind of go to your head. I don't know if it's one of the. I mean, they, people are talking about that. Maybe he's just not as confident as he was last year. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping he, he is able to kind of find some confidence fast uh, because he, when, he's, when he's on, he is, a very, he is one of our top players and, and really, you know, can figure out stuff to do. I mean, just to, to figure something out here, that 09 uh, Confederations Cup, when he out-muscled, I forget if it was, if it was Ramos or, or PK or who exactly it was on the defense, but he just out-muscled him. Got the ball, turned it in, and then scored that goal against Spain, which obviously was a, a big moment for us when we beat Spain two 0 in that in that semifinal. I uh, that Bosnia game when he uh, I think he had a hat trick. I just remember you know we somehow got tied again three three, and then he scored that that free kick. So I think when Josie's on, he is very good for us. It's just lately he just hasn't been it hasn't been that X factor for us, you know. Yeah, I want to hope he gets a goal. If you're, if you're a USA fan, you want to help him get the goal against, uh, against Nigeria, correct? Yeah. The yep. Next game. yep, Nigeria's the next one. The goal. I think you and I both know from our soccer experience. I think something is just when you're on, you know where the goal is without even really looking at it. And I think, obviously, these guys at the highest level may even have less time than. Than, than, than we did at the at the PGSU Intramural Fuel House. <laughs> uh, we, had a little, we, we, had a, we had a little more time to find the goal. But one uh, my other interesting question, I don't know uh, if, you, if you know about this or how much you know about it, but apparently after we get to Brazil, I guess we're in a closed scrimmage against Belgium, which is kind of an interesting thing. Huh. Um, in general, just a closed scrimmage is kind of weird to me. Kind of a secret thing. I don't need to know. I don't even know. I mean, we might never know what the result is. We could win 8-0 to zero or could get a little bit to zero. But the interesting thing beyond that is that chances are you know, we're not going to win the group. It's gonna be, it was, uh, there would probably be a lot of people running around their shirts off with the American flag on their back. Yeah. In the street, uh, in the United States, if that happened, and I might be one of them. Uh, but the chances are to get a super against 
And if you look at the group of we the group we would go against in the right next round, the what chances are if you look at it through the age, I think it's quite ourselves. Right. And the chances are Belgium will win that group. So I just think it's an interesting proposition that I see I mean they obviously did Clinton and them they know these things going into the tur- going into the tournament a long time ago. But there's a decent chance that if we get out of the group we'll have a close scrimmage and then a real game a knockout game against Belgium yeah. kind of a dark horse, which is an interesting situation. That is an interesting situation. Because um, that, yeah, that obviously, you know, not to get ahead of ourselves, but I think Belgium has a good chance to win that group.